I hardly know what to tell you about the next half hour, except that it has been reported as true by those to whom it happened. It has been investigated, and no one as yet has been able to explain it or disprove it. Lovely Tudor house in the English countryside will tomorrow be the scene of a wedding. The bride will come down those stairs and she will join the bridegroom here by this fireplace. It should be a joyous occasion and yet the bright June sunshine cannot quite burn away the shadow cast by a recent death. The death of one who tomorrow would have smiled warmly on the wedding couple in his role of best man. Due to the shock and pain of this sudden loss, the church has considerately permitted the ceremony to be held here, instead of the chapel two miles away. But if the church, or Scotland Yard, knew all that is to be known about the bridegroom, there would be no wedding. It all began with two old friends on the last bachelor holiday. A holiday in one of the most breathtakingly beautiful spots on earth, the spectacular Swiss Alps. What better place, what better way for a man to have his last taste of absolute soaring freedom? But part of the exhilaration of this thrilling sport is the undercurrent of danger, the ever-present threat of accident, the dizzy leap into space, this pure white world seems an unlikely place for murder. But watch these two men closely. Lucky I saw you go over. Here, have you got the rope? Yes. One good snow and I might have been here till the Edelweiss blew. Here, catch. Right, got it. Now just hold on there a minute and I'll have you out of it. Uh, let's hope so. Oh, come on, man, knot it, knot it. It's a good thing Nancy can't see you. For your own sake, I hope you show a little more efficiency as a bridegroom next week. Oh, come on now, Colin. Can't a man lying on death's ledge be allowed a little bit of humor? The trouble with you, Colin, is you're so confoundedly sensitive, always reading innuendos into things. You don't have to tell me what you're thinking. It's written all over your face. You're thinking Nancy again. As if he knew what she liked better than I do. Isn't that right? Well, come on, man. What are you waiting for? For the love of God, what are you doing? Have you lost your mind? Colin, for the love of God, don't leave me here. I'm thieves. Despite Peter Duncan's untimely death in the Swiss Alps, Colin's wedding date was not changed. And so, a few days later, a properly shaken bridegroom arrived at one of England's more stately mansions. Afterwards, we became separated. Eventually, when I got back to the lodge, Peter wasn't there. Well, then, of course, I realized something pretty drastic must have happened. So I organized a search party. But then this snowstorm suddenly came down. How awful. How simply awful. Yes, well, I, I think you know the rest. By the morning, when we finally found him... Is it true? Was he really frozen? Gillian, darling. I'm sorry to upset you, Nancy. I. I realize I shouldn't have explained it in quite in so... In such detail, perhaps not. I suppose you stayed for the funeral. Funeral? Oh, oh, yes, yes, I... 
You know, the chapel in the village. It seemed the simplest way. Um, were you uh, the only one there? The only one there? But I told you, Nancy, I wasn't there. I, I lost him. No. I... Uh, no, no, darling. I mean, at the funeral. Oh. Uh, no, no. His uh, father and sister came from London. And then there were other friends from the lodge. So sad to think of poor sweet Peter. Miss Little, won't you come downstairs for a cup of tea? Come along, Gilead. Frozen solid? Gillian! Colin, I realize what a strain this all has been. And so it would seem to have been to you. But of course. I was very fond of Peter. Indeed? Well, you know that I was. Yes, yes, I believe you were. Do you like my dress? Your dress? Yes, yes, it's quite beautiful. I'll just take it off. I'll only be a moment. Nancy, you... You seem to be bearing up remarkably well. I do? Yes, no tears. Unless you shed them all. But darling, I didn't cry. Oh? Why not, Nancy? Why not? Colin, I'm afraid I don't understand what's on your mind. Should there be something? Well, I don't know whether there should be, but I certainly sense something. Oh, please, Nancy, please be honest about it. Honest about what? About Peter. You know perfectly well you were more than just fond of him. In fact, if you felt you hadn't been obliged to be married to me, Colin. you'd have... Well, it's true, perfectly true. I'm not quite so unobservant as you and Peter may have thought. How can you stand there and insinuate... Well, that's ridiculous. Peter never meant anything to me, except that he was your friend. And if he hadn't been your friend, well, I, I don't think we would have exchanged a half dozen words. Are you suggesting, for one second, that Peter and I... I'm not suggesting anything. Colin. Well, you two always seem so... So what? Devoted. Devoted? What do you mean? Nothing, Nancy, nothing. I do have some of these fresh strawberries that uh, Bromley sent. It was very thoughtful of them, don't you think? Oh, yes, yes, it was. Oh, my dear, my poor boy. What's that, then? Oh, well, what I mean to say is, here have I been prattling on like a fool, and all the time I... 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 I planned something so differently. Colin. Oh, this has been such a nasty business for you. And such a shock. Yes, yes, of course it was. I can't deny that. Well, it just doesn't seem fair. Not fair? Well, I mean, after the beastly time you had after the war. Goodness me, you, you certainly had your, your share of emotional uh, stress. Uh, oh, dear, I'm not putting it very well, am I? But you do understand. Oh, yes, yes, Elizabeth, I understand very well indeed. I... I do quite understand what you're trying to say. You're referring to my crash in the Spitfire in oh. England's finest hour. And Colin! And I became a patient in a hospital for mental disorders, a prize patient. Of course, after that long, trying time, and, and now this... But I can hardly see any collection, Elizabeth. Well, I'm simply saying, dear, that it doesn't seem fair for you to have so many emotional upsets. Oh, I see. I mean... Peter Duncan was your best friend. Yes, of course he was. Believe me, the first thing that Nancy said when we heard... Uh, let me see, your letter came... Um, well, what did... Uh, what was the first thing that Nancy said? Oh, uh, oh, yes, yes, of course. Well, <clears throat> she, uh, she read it. 
And then there was a very long pause, and she said, Oh, no. Oh, no, Mummy. Oh, no. I see. Well, then I took it and read it. And all I could see was Peter's lovely smile. And his, oh, his dashing way. He was such a dear, dear, naughty boy. No, it's just too much to accept. Too much. As Nancy said. What did uh, Nancy say? Well, Nancy said it was positively ironic. Ironic? What else could you call it? Big, strong man like Peter, who'd come through the war without a scratch. Sound and whole and... both physically and... Oh, oh dear. Well, anyway, I... I suppose you, um... You must get very upset when you think about him alone at the last, with no one... Oh, my dear, I'm just turning the knife in your heart with every word. Oh, I am so sorry. Do forgive me. Call on love. Listen to me. I've been so upset during dinner and even after. Well, as a matter of fact, Ever since this afternoon, when you walked out like that. Oh, please, darling, may we, may we forget about it. But I don't really see how we can forget about it, darling. After all, we're getting married tomorrow. And yet there's this, this barrier between us. God in love, if I said anything to possibly... No, no, you said nothing, darling. But I must have. Colin, do you love me? No, I do. And you must know that I love you. Yet I feel that... I am to blame for upsetting you because I know you so well. And I know how sensitive you are. And I know how much Peter meant to you. Please, darling, uh, maybe just not talk about Peter anymore. Of course not, of course not. But I do want you to know, darling, that we are not mere childhood sweethearts anymore. Well, all last year, ever since the war, I've watched you come back. And I've watched you come back to me after... Well, sometimes, Colin, I was even afraid that you would never get back to yourself, even. So, darling, please don't withdraw. Don't withdraw again. And don't let's have any secrets. What secret do you mean? Well, it occurred to me that since that outburst today, that you were probably trying to tell me, well, since the ordeal you've been through, that you would rather postpone the wedding. Postpone it? You mean call it off? Please believe me, darling, it doesn't have to be tomorrow. I mean, we could wait a bit longer. Uh, a week or a month, even. I see. I see. So that's what you really want. Well, no. Colin, that is not what I want. I want you. That's all I want. And I want you to be happy. Well, darling, please marry me now. If I felt I'd ever lose you, I'd... I'd rather be dead myself. What is it, my dear? What is it? I don't know, really. I... I suddenly felt a chill. Oh. A peculiar chill. It's nothing, darling. It's, it's just the night air. Oh, Colin, I do love you, darling. Ah, thank you, Wilson. Everything all set now? I think so, sir. Good. Excuse me, sir. What's the matter, Wilson? It's just that these are so icy cold. The brushes are. What, what see, are you talking about? See for yourself, sir. It's just as if they'd been left out in the snow all night, sir. Oh, nonsense, Wilson. You've been left out in the snow all night, I think. <laughs> when are they coming, Aunt Elizabeth? Oh, well, Aunt Hazel and Uncle Freddy here. Aunt Liz? Oh, Gillian, do contain yourself. The whole family will be here soon. Soon enough, indeed. 
Come and help me with these flowers. Oh, how beautiful. Oh, how heavenly. Colin, oh, Colin, look. It's a bridal bouquet. Just arrived. Oh, Jill, they're quite lovely. Gillian, come and hold this for me, please. Yes, Aunt Elizabeth. Colin, let me see how handsome you are. Yes, dear. <laughs> oh, marvelous. You should get married every day. Aunt Elizabeth. Yes? Look what's happened to the flowers. What? What? They're frozen stiff. Oh, that fool florist. He must have left them in the refrigerator all night. I, oh, I, I swear, they're, they're like ice. But, Aunt Elizabeth, they weren't. Just a moment ago, when Colin and I... Well, don't worry about it, Elizabeth. They'll, they'll thaw out in a minute or two. Uh, Colin, the flowers will be all right. Don't let it upset you. I'm not upset. Oh, yes, you are. It's only natural. All bridegrooms are nervous. Oh, but Cookie will make it all right. Cook is simply marvelous with catastrophes. They're frozen stiff. Just a small wedding, aren't you? There'll be all the more cake. Why, that's wizard. I didn't think anyone could do that. Except in the winter. When it's cold. Colin, please show me how. Please, Gillian, would you leave me alone for a little while? I'm sorry. Beg your pardon, sir, but uh, if you'll permit me. To... Oh, yes, yes. Please, Thanks. please. I understand it won't be long before the guests begin to arrive. Why don't you tell me how you do it? gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this congregation to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Wilt thou have this woman to thy wedded wife to live together after God's ordinance in the holiest state of matrimony? Wilt thou love her, comfort her, and keep her in sickness and in health? I will. And forsaking all other, keep thee only unto her so long as ye both shall live. I will. Wilt thou have this man, if I wedded husband, to live together after God's ordinance in the holiest state of matrimony? Wilt thou obey him and serve him, love, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all other, keep thee only unto him, so long as ye both shall live? I will. Who give this woman to be married to this man? I do. I, Colin, take thee in answer to my wedded wife. I, Colin, take thee in answer to my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. 
For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Death do us part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. And therefore I plight thee my troth. And therefore I plight thee my troth. I, Nancy, take thee, Colin, to my wedded husband. I, Nancy, take thee, Colin, for my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love, cherish, and to obey. To love, cherish, and obey. Till death us do part, according to God's holy ordinance. To death us do part, according to God's holy ordinance. And therefore, I give thee my troth. And therefore, I give thee my troth. With this ring, I thee wed. With my body, I thee worship. With this ring, I thee wed. With my body, I thee worship. And with all my worldly goods, I thee endow. And with all my worldly goods, I thee endow. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. And of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I now pronounce you man and wife. Yes, there is. No. Yes, Sonny, please tell me what is it? What's the matter? Let me go. Let me go. I'm freezing. Please let me go. I can't stand it. Nancy! Nancy! Guests will become impatient to see the newlyweds. To wish them well on their honeymoon. But there will be no honeymoon. Instead, there will be long years spent in the veteran's hospital, in the psychiatric ward, during which Colin Chandler will mumble his confession of murder over and over again. The psychic phenomenon which brought this about? Well, it's called a poltergeist, which ordinarily means a mischievous ghost. But in this case, it was a ghost that brought terror 